In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the exact tools and softwares that you need to take your Amazon business from zero to $10,000 a month in revenue. I see thousands and thousands of new Amazon sellers start their businesses, and a very common thread that I see amongst a lot of them is they tend to overcomplicate things, especially when we're talking about software and tools, and a lot of people overspend a lot of their starting software budget, so I definitely don't want that to be you. So with this video, we're gonna be breaking down the exact tools that you actually need to start selling on Amazon. And then at the end of the video, I'll break down a specific strategy that you can use using two of these tools to find your very first product. But before you do that, if you're looking to get plugged into the Amazon community, I have a free Discord community of over 30,000 Amazon sellers linked down below. There's going to be a ton of information in the Discord that's going to help you scale your Amazon business as you're getting started. But let's go ahead and jump into the video. So to get us started off in this video, I went ahead and pulled up this product right here. This was a product that my virtual assistant team stumbled across. So it's just going to be a good example for the purposes of the video. So right down here, this is the first tool that you're going to need for your Amazon business. This tool is called Keepa. It's about 20 bucks a month. It's absolutely essential if you want to sell on Amazon. And just very briefly, I'll show you what it does. And as we go through this video, there's going to be full software tutorials of each one of these softwares on my YouTube channel. So if you want to go check one of those out, feel free to go check those videos out. But as we start looking down here at the Keepa chart here, I'll kind of briefly introduce you. The green line right here is the sales rank. This line essentially shows us how fast this item is selling over time. And this is actually a bit of a weird Keepa chart. So you can see right here, the green line dropping, just give you a very simple Keepa lesson here. The green line dropping means that the sales velocity of this item is picking up, meaning it's selling more and more, which makes sense because another thing that we can learn about this item by looking at the Keepa chart down here on the bottom box down here, we can see how many sellers have been on this listing over time, which is useful for many, many different reasons. But in this case, we can see that there's only been people on this listing since about July 16th at the time of recording this video. Back here, there was only one seller on it for a little bit of July, but for a lot of the time, this listing has had literally no one on it, which is really interesting because as we look into detail on this listing here, we can see that these orange triangles here that are indicating the price of the FBA sellers, so the people who are using Amazon Prime shipping, the price of the FBA sellers has been hanging around about $31 recently. We can see the number of new sellers is increasing. The sales rank is decreasing, which means that the sales velocity is picking up. So Amazon is learning that, oh, there's people selling this item now. People are buying this item. So it's going to start being served to more and more Amazon customers and more and more people are about to start buying this item. So there's a very simple little crash course on Keepa. Again, not a full guide on Keepa by any means, but the next tool that you need for your business is called Selleramp right here. This tool does a ton of different things. So I'll go ahead and quickly walk through what Selleramp is going to do for your business. So right up here in the top box is going to tell you if you're eligible. This means if you're ungated, it means you're allowed to sell the item. The alerts tab is going to show you a bunch of stuff. In this case, it's not hazmat. We're not worried about IP complaints, all this kind of stuff. If some of this is going over your head, don't worry. There's a lot to learn with Amazon, but I'm trying to break it all down for you. So it's also going to show you the BSR. This is the sales rank, shows you roughly how fast things are selling. The estimated sales is really nice because it shows you how many items are selling per month. We've also got a profit calculator here built into Selleramp. So let's say you find this item out in the wild for 12 bucks, means you're going to make $6.46 in profit on it. There's the ranks and prices chart. You can see the average prices over time. So if you want to make sure you're going to be profitable in the long run, this could be pretty useful. Uh, show you the average buy boxes and all that kind of stuff. The alerts tab again is going to show you if the product is meltable. You know, right now we're in summer. So if it was chocolate, this would say, hey, you're about to buy chocolate. It's going to melt. Don't buy this product. Eligibility, hazmat, all that kind of stuff is going to show you for you. There's also an embedded Keepa chart on here. You could make do with just the seller amp Keepa chart. There's some data on the Keepa chart that gets a little bit more advanced. I would recommend having both. I guess if you really wanted to, you could just use this, but really I'd recommend having both. The Again, we've got the profit calculator with a little bit more detail. The Google Sheets feature is really cool. I can make a whole video on this alone, but just a quick little breakdown of how it works is I've got, this is on my test account here. So for example, Christmas, anytime I come across an item where the Keepa a chart indicates that the prices get really high during Christmas, or it was a Christmas item that did really well last year, and I want to come back to that item. All I would have to do is click this button, and then it's going to export the information about this particular product to that Google Sheet. So come November, October, I can come back, review that Christmas spreadsheet, and find a whole bunch of information about these types of different products. There's a bunch more of these tabs as well. The offers tab right here is also super useful. It's going to show you who else is on this listing. You can filter by prime or not prime. And then there's also a super cool strategy using the offers tab that I'll show you guys here at the end of the video to find your very first product when you're selling on Amazon. Selleramp also comes with an app for your smartphone. There's also a web app. There's some more use cases we can have for it, but that's just the bare bones of what it's going to do for your business. If you do want to check out Selleramp, there's a code below. It's Launchpad. It makes your first six weeks something like nine bucks. It's really a no brainer to go ahead and activate Selleramp. Go ahead and activate Keepa. And I would say those two are the tools that I would deem absolutely essential. So if you're starting out with your Amazon business, get both of those. The rest of the tools that I'm going to talk about in this video, you're fine to wait until you generate your first little bit of sales. Let's say one to $2,000 a 
$1,000 a month in sales. And then I would go ahead and pull out the trigger on these next tools that I'm gonna go ahead and talk about. So this next tool right here, I'm in the back end for my repricer. This is a tool called Be Cool. And essentially what it does is you can see this is some items that I sold way in the past. It allows me to plug in a minimum price and a maximum price for every item. I also have custom set rules based on a bunch of different things. In this case, I was just using a very simple rule. And basically what this does is anytime I am between these two boxes for my price. So we've got the minimum was $8 here and the maximum ended up being $17. So what that tells my repricer here is anytime the price is between $8 and $17. My repricer is going to go ahead and activate and follow the rules for whatever rule. You can get really, really custom with it. The basic rule that most people you're going to want to do is set it up so that anytime the price drops or raises, you're going to go ahead and match that same price as the other sellers. That way you're still going to be getting consistent sales. That's how the buy box rotates on Amazon. If you're within a couple percentage points of the low price of the buy box price on each listing, that's how you're going to be able to generate sales. So a repricer is really nice because especially over time, you're going to accumulate hundreds hundreds, maybe even thousands of listings. And it's going to get really difficult to monitor each listing on the back end, making sure your prices are still right because prices are going to move a ton on Amazon. So a repricing tool is going to not only make sure that your prices are dropping when others are dropping, making sure you're going to continue to get sales, even if prices drop a little bit, but also if prices go up, you want to make sure you're following other people up or even forcing other people up with repricers. There's some really fancy stuff we can do with repricers in order to maximize our profit. And really, if you're spending more than an hour or two a month on repricing, going into the back end of your seller account, changing the price from $10.50 to $10.40, doing all that kind of stuff. If you're spending more than an hour or two, that tells me that you're valuing your time at a really low hourly rate because a tool like Be Cool, the base plan of Be Cool is $25 a month. So that's going to save you several hours of work, that $25, which, you know, if we're doing some simple math there, I hope your time is worth more than $25 an hour. So really, if it only saves you an hour, it's absolutely worth it for your business. I generally recommend getting a repricing tool. Once you're doing about one to $2,000 a month in sales, there's no real point in having a repricer if you don't have anything in your store yet. If you're not really selling anything yet, there's no real point in spending that budget. If you've got plenty of capital to go ahead and get started up with your Amazon business, go ahead and pull the trigger on this tool. It will help you get off the ground a lot faster. It'll help your items sell quicker at the beginning. But if you're on a really tight budget, you don't need it right from the get-go. You can do a little bit manually, but don't wait too long because this tool is going to save you a ton of time. And I use this on every single listing that I sell. I have some very custom tailored rules. Again, there's videos on my channel that walk you through more specifics on this tool, especially. But having a repricing tool is really awesome to make sure that your prices are moving even in the middle of the night that sales are still happening because your repricer is activating, making sure certain levers are being pulled and the sales are going to continue to keep trickling in. And if you're at the point in your Amazon business where you're ready for a repricing tool, you're doing a little bit of sales right now and you're ready to kind of hit the next level. Again, there's going to be a link down below for a free trial of Be Cool. If you want to go ahead and check that out, there's more videos on the channel. We walk you through that. And if you do use those links, that helps out the channel. And I really appreciate that. This next tool that I would recommend here is another very simple one. This one is a lifetime license, which I really like. Don't have to have those monthly recurring charges, but it's a tool called IP Alert. This is going to help make sure your account is safe in the long run. Essentially what this does is it's a database of a bunch of different brands and products that other sellers in the past have had IP complaints about. If you're unfamiliar with what an IP complaint is, basically when we're selling products on Amazon, if the brand owner wants to kick us off, it's well within their right and they can give us an IP complaint. If you get enough of those, Amazon can kind of ding your account and you might be able to get suspended in the long run if you don't respond to it, all that kind of stuff. So this is just kind of a nice little insurance policy tool. IP alert just embeds on every Amazon page. And as you can see here, it's telling me, hey, this brand is known to file IP complaints, I have to press OK. And then that little siren is still going to hang out there. That way, if I'm looking at this item and it ended up being profitable, and I'm thinking about selling it. IP alert is going to say, hey, people in the past have had issues. They're getting IP complaints with this brand. So this is going to help protect your account in the long run from getting those IP complaints and having bad things happen to your account. And again, if you did want to go ahead and pull the trigger on IP alert and make sure you're a little bit safer while you're sourcing, make sure your account stays safe in the long run. If you use FOP 30 when you're checking out on IP alert, that saves you 30 bucks, helps me out as well. And I really do check this tool on every listing that I'm looking at. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about the next tool. So this tool right here is called Inventory Lab. This tool is $50 a month. So it's another one of those tools that I'd recommend getting once you have a little bit of sales under your belt, one to $2,000 a month in sales. But basically this tool is going to save you time on several different processes in your business. Number one is going to save you time in listing. So let's say we wanted to sell this disc soap we were looking at just a second ago. All we would have to do is go ahead and paste that ASIN up into here. If you have the product in hand, you can use a barcode scanner and scan the barcode into Inventory Lab. We just press search. It's going to find that product for it. We're going to select it. And now this is how listing on Amazon works. We don't have to do like on eBay. We have to make our own listings and all that kind of stuff on Amazon. We can just hop on the listings of other sellers. So inventory lab helps us find that on seller central. If you punch in the ASIN in the same way, this little barcode right here is basically the UPC version, except just for Amazon is basically how that code works. So when we're jumping into inventory lab over here, we can punch in a bunch of different information about this product. So we can say how many we have. So let's say we have 10 of them. Let's say we're buying them 
them for $10 a unit. We can punch in our supplier. So in this case, let's say we bought it from Walgreens. This is soap, so it would probably expire. So we'd want to activate some kind of expiration date here. So we can just make one up. So we can do 01, 01, and then we'll go for 2024 or something like that. If you're watching in 2024, what's up? You're quite a bit in the future. And then down here on the bottom, it's also gonna create a custom SKU for us. You can configure this within your settings, but something I like to do is make it have my supplier name. So we had bought this one from Walgreens, the date that I actually started the process of sending this item in. This is my buy cost right here. So when I go back into my repricer, so right over here, you can see I've been doing this for a long time. You can see this one is from 2019. It was July 18th of 2019, and I paid $2.04 for this little cordless telephone. I probably got it at a thrift store or something like that. But when I go back through and do my repricing, if I have this information embedded in my SKU, I know how much I paid for it, which helps me inform how much wiggle room I have on the price to make sure I'm still making a profit and all that kind of stuff. So I really like packing a lot of information in your SKUs. There's probably some more information that you might want to pack in your SKUs. That's just what I've been rolling with for quite a while now. And then once you do that, once you plug in the basic information about this product, you're going to go ahead and punch in a price down here. So it looks like other sellers are selling it for like 34, 35 bucks. So just go ahead and send it in at 35 bucks. And then we click add to batch. And then once we do that, if you want to get really advanced with it, you can link this up with a Rolo or a Dymo label printer, and then it'll automatically print out your labels and you can slap it over the barcodes, get ready to send it off to Amazon. But this tool really simplifies the listing process. And then also I can't show you this feature because it would be giving away a bunch of information, all kinds of the back ends, all kinds of the products I'm selling, which I unfortunately can't share. But within Inventory Lab, since we went ahead and said, hey, we're buying this from Walgreens for 10 bucks, it can also store all of your accounting. So you can see FBA sales right here. So this is just a big list of all the items that I've sold ever since I started using Inventory Lab. And then this software is also what helps me generate my profit and loss statements at the end of the year based on the cost of goods that Inventory Lab has totaled up over the year in terms of what I sent in, what sold. Inventory Lab is going to track all that for me. And it's also going to track a lot of the other expenses within your Amazon account. You know, think about shipping costs and all those other expenses that you bill through your Amazon Seller Central account that can get a little bit trickier to track since you're not putting it on a credit card and doing it in the traditional way. But Inventory Lab is going to help you with that. I mean, it's a big help come tax season since it's all in one place. And really, it's no extra work to track all that since we're already doing it to list all our products through Inventory Lab and it really helps save me some time. So those are all of the tools that you're going to need to be able to scale your Amazon business to $10,000 a month in revenue. Very, very possible, especially once we start to source using the method I'm about to show you as promised. The sourcing method that's probably the best way for beginners to get started is called reverse sourcing. Number one, because it involves tools that we're already going to need anyway. Selleramp and Keepa are the two tools that we're going to need for this method. So we found this dish soap right here. This product is a little bit overpriced, like it's going for 31 bucks. It's just kind of a little bottle of dish soap. My team actually identified this as a potential lead for selling. So I'm sharing this with you guys. It's not the greatest lead in the world, but that's not a bad thing for this particular sourcing method because we know that the other sellers on this listing, they're probably buying it from the same places that we were finding it for, making a little bit of profit. But the information that we can learn from these storefronts is way more valuable. If we just go ahead and click through one of these storefronts. So this guy right here has 31 feedback. So they've been selling for a little bit. The feedback is pretty hard to get on Amazon, but 31 means they're not really doing crazy numbers yet, but they definitely have kind of got their feet wet and they're going to have other products that we could look through and see if any of them are going to be profitable for our purposes. So we can see right off the bat, we can see they're selling lots of beauty and personal care, health and household. Here's a couple of the different brands. It looks like they're not really focused on anything in particular at the moment. But as we're scrolling through here using Selleramp, we can see a bunch of information about this product. So we can see who's on the listing. So we can see Amazon's on this listing. If you're not familiar, Amazon does not share sales with third party sellers. So this makes it an easy thing to move past. The next listings, it looks like they're competing with a lot of Amazon here. So make sure this is why we have Keepa, right? Keepa is going to show us same as Selleramp. They're both going to show us when Amazon's on a listing and it's going to help us avoid jumping on those listings and end up losing money, right? But as we continue to scroll down here, this product kind of stuck out to me because I see the max cost here. This is going to be kind of a simple profit calculation and it's saying that I'm going to need to pay $8.71 for this item for it to meet my profit criteria of 35% ROI, $3 profit per unit. I and mean, just based on looking at it, I think I might be able to buy it for that. So why don't we go ahead and press the Google button here and then this is going to search it on Google for us. So I see it looks like a 12 ounce bottle. We'll see if this is the same thing. We're looking at a 12 ounce bottle. We also want to go ahead and open up the Amazon link for this product because we're going to check for a couple different things. Number one, we're checking for that IP alert. No IP alert on this item, which is good. Looks like we do have a very flat price line, which can be good. It can also be bad. Sometimes it means that the brand owner is on the listing means they might be controlling the price in some sort. So we'd want to start scrolling over. And yeah, so we see fairy tales hair care is on this listing. So this would be something we would avoid. The brand owner is already selling this product. As we already talked about, brand owners can kick you off the listing if they want. And most likely if a brand owner is selling the product on Amazon, they want all the sales on that listing. If you were the brand owner, you would want all the sales on your own listings, right? So they're probably going to kick you off. So this would be something we could just continue scrolling 
scrolling past. This is another example of something that might be worth checking out. So we've got body wash here. It's 25 bucks for a two pack. We need to be able to get two bottles of it for 10 bucks to meet our profit criteria. And so if we can get these for about $5 each, that would be awesome. So scrolling on through here, I see it looks like Walmart might have it, but it's seven bucks. Target might have it. We could just go ahead and check just out of curiosity, but it looks like it's going to be seven bucks here. We can also check Bed Bath & Beyond. So the Target soap right here, seven bucks each could be the same thing. And then over here in Bed Bath & Beyond, I also see it's seven bucks as well. Bed Bath & Beyond also might have a 20% off code that they do fairly often that could make this worth looking at. But you can see right away, we're finding items that are pretty close to profitable. This is a sourcing method that I use all the time. This is a sourcing method that my team uses all the time. And it's really beginner friendly. Number one, it's fairly manual, which might sound like a bad thing for you, but there's a lot of softwares out there. Tactical arbitrage for one that allows you to scrape through websites automatically. It's not really necessary for your first little bit of sales, which is why I didn't include it in this video, but everyone who's using those tools is looking at the same stuff. So if you're going in here and digging through the weeds a little bit more manually, you're going to be finding items that are going to last a lot longer because it's not showing up on softwares and different tools and stuff like that. Like these two packs and stuff are often really difficult for those softwares to see just because the UPCs might not match, you know, a lot of different factors. So using a little bit of a more manual sourcing method is going to help you not only learn more about the business as you're sourcing, but it's also going to make sure that your first couple purchases aren't being bought using the same methods that a thousand other people are using. Because if you're buying it with the same methods that other people are using, especially if you're not digging the extra mile, doing it like this, if you're just scanning and taking it at face value, buying at retail price, those items are probably going to tank and you're probably going to lose a little bit of money on that versus getting into the weeds tends to be a little bit better and you'll find more long-term items. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got a ton of value out of it. If you did, please feel free to add some value to my business and hit that subscribe button down below. I really appreciate that. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, always happy to answer those down below as well. But I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.